Hey guys, and welcome to Ask Mark number 34. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm in a different position. Obviously, the way that we edit these things, guys, in the previous couple of videos, and we, like the one, I say <laughs> at I, yeah, the way that I position <laughs> things, like Mark's quite close up to the camera, and I'm like a mile back. So I've gone old school. I've gone in front of the camera, in front of the Mac. I can, I can move my bench back. If no, don't, 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 because I've just. Oh no! Oh I've, no! This is why you shouldn't do things. Look, this is why I moved. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So apologies <laughs> for the backdrop. That will change at some point. I'll sort that out, but I can be bothered to do we'll, that. Today. We'll green screen it. We'll, yeah. we'll fix it in post. Yeah, we'll fix it in post. I'll let you do that. Anyway. <laughs> Happy Monday. No, Friday, what am I saying? Monday, I'm jumping ahead. Skip the whole weekend. Uh, if you're listening to this as the podcast, I hope you have a crack in Friday. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've had a cracking Friday. And welcome to the weekend. Because this is Ask Mark, I've got to ask Mark. Mark, how the devil are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I've been bitten by an insect and like my entire arm just swollen up awesome um the other day so um yeah it's it's managing to, to go down now it looks it looks more like a human arm now sweet um i wonder what sort of superpowers yeah, you're gonna well. get i know i don't know some kind of insect power <laughs> it's uh, the power you're gonna get the power of biting people and making them <laughs> swell <laughs> but i already have that power uh <laughs> it's gonna happen quicker they swell quicker <laughs> I'm going to grow a proboscis. That's it. <clears throat> That's it right there. Cool. Well, I'm glad you're all right. I'm glad we didn't have to chop your arm off. Although I did volunteer with my machete to hack it off. I know. First. Rather quickly, I'd know. Yeah, it's like, I've got a bite. It's like, I'll chop it off. Let me chop it off. <laughs> it's a paper cut, Sean. Look, let me just cut. I've got a cut from the neck down. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's my murderous side coming out of me. <clears throat> let Let's let's just get straight into it. Let's just get to the guts, twist the knife, and answer some questions. So the first question is from Christopher, and he says, I'm curious, how do you tie the bolt snap to your regulator hose near the second stage? How do you do it, Mark? Uh, so with a bit of cave line or as a line from an old spool, um, I actually have one here. You, uh, you basically, it just so happens. Um, uh, yeah, so about a fist's distance away from the uh, the second stage, um, just sort of tie the bolt snap about three or four loops around the uh, the hose itself, and then tie a square knot on one side, and then the same on the other. Melt down those edges, and then you have a pretty secure yet you can still cut it free uh, attachment point. There are a few different ways. Some divers they'll use a uh, an O ring. If you kind of loop it around the hose and then use a cable tie around the uh, the bolt snap, you can, or the other way around actually, um, so that way you still have the other uh, thing. But um, but that way it's kind of attached, but if you really yank it, it will come free. Um, so instead of just kind of getting snagged on something and really getting caught and you can't get free, you can just kind of really rip it free um, with the line it's a bit more secure you actually have to use a cutting device to uh, to cut it free should you need to um, I just prefer it just because it's a bit more secure and o-rings over time they do wear out and the uh, the cable tie as well if you put the cable tie around the hose especially a rubber hose it can dig in so it does damage it so I just prefer a bit of cave line uh, you only need about I don't know, 30 centimetres, 12 inches or something, and uh, they yeah, just melt down the edges, Bob's your uncle, you're done. Cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, I do the same thing with my um, uh, my gauges. They uh, sort of end up, I do it with all sorts of stuff, um, dive knives, I'll, uh, I'll use a bit of cave line just to attach a bolt snap. Uh, yeah, I just find it the most convenient. Do you have bolt snaps on your dog's leashes? Uh, I do. Yeah, You're actually, Rupert's collar you, has a bolt snap. You need it. help, mate. I think you need to go I'll to some sort of clinic. <laughs> I'll show it to you one day. I use some old uh, climbing rope. Uh, I just cut it up because it's just climbing rope. It's not that important. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I used a, a bolt snap to uh, to create Rupert's collar. And then you, of course, you got the large eye, so you can still clip off onto it, and uh, you can attach his um, his dog name tag thing onto it as well 
Cool. I'll show it to you later. Yeah. Nice. That's cool, man. How do you attach bolt, bolt snaps? Yeah. How do you attach your <laughs> bolt snap to your uh, your hose? Let us Pet. know in the comments below. <laughs> Uh, clean answers only, please. Uh, question number two is from Christian. Uh, he says, uh, they say, anyway, let's, let's just move on. Uh, I'm considering switching from a vest BCD to a backplate slash wing. I narrowed the choices down to the X Deep Ghost or the Apex Black Ice. I'm not going mm. tech and mostly using a single tank 15 slash 12 liters. I travel mm. occasionally, but like a sleek lightweight BCD. I only dive in Norwegian waters in a dry suit year round. What do you recommend? And does the Ghost have enough lift for winter diving? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, both of those would be sort of perfectly fine. Instead of the Ghost, I'd probably look at the Zen. Um, the Ghost is a single shell bladder, so it's only one piece of material, whereas the Zen has a separate outer shell. So if you brush up against something, if you rip the outer shell, you still have that internal bladder. Um, so it's, it's kind of a bit of redundancy, but you don't... I don't think the Zen is particularly heavier compared to the, uh, the Ghost, but it still has a lot of the same features. Um, the uh, the black ice is more of a recreational BCD. It's a wing style, but it's very very popular, um, very tough as well. So that would be uh, sort of perfectly fine. It is going to be heavier than the uh, the Ghost or the Zen, um, but either or they're they're both great choices. Um, would they have enough lift? Uh, yeah, because normally you have to add extra weight to uh, sort of compensate for your bulky wetsuit or dry suit. So yeah, just take a little bit of lead off. Um, but yeah, they, they should have enough buoyancy just for a single twelve or even a fifteen. Um, mm. That's that's kind of what they're what they're made for. Cool. Um, but yeah, in, instead of the ghost, I'd probably lean down the um, uh, the Zen route just because it's it's a bit tougher. The ghost is a bit more stripped down, so um, so it's mainly for the traveling diver. But um, but the the Zen is that kind of all rounder. You can use it at home, but it's also pretty light that you can travel with it as well. Cool. Um, you meant to help them, not add more products for them to look at and decide, Mark? <laughs> you can Mark, also what, look at. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Mark, what should I go for? The Ghost or the Black Ice? I'll go for the Zen. <laughs> yeah, have you considered Did. a Shearwater Terek? <laughs> I, I think you should. If you need a BCD, a wing style, you need to have a Terek. <laughs> you got to. You're not a, you're not a diver, otherwise. Um Guys, yeah, exactly. Have you <laughs> considered, Have you were, were you looking at the Ghost and the Black Ice or something very similar? Let us know your thought process on picking the right one for you down in the comments below. Okay, so swiftly moving on to question three. So this is from Ten Medorado. Ten Medorado? Yeah. yeah. Why, why not? Or, or, or Dave, we'll just call you Dave. So Dave says... <laughs> Uh, he left this comment, or sorry, they left this comment on that, how to change your inflator. Uh, they say, mm -hmm. what do you think about pool dumps, and are they safe? Uh, so pool dumps, I presume is, uh, you're referring to uh, when you have a cable inside of your inflator. With, with most BCDs, you usually have pull dumps over the right-hand shoulder, usually on the, the left or the right kidney. Um, but... A lot of inflators, which a lot of divers don't actually realize, is that if you just hold on to the inflator and pull the inflator down, the cable on the inside actually reaches up to the left-hand shoulder and there's a vent up there. So that's a really quick and easy way to like just be holding onto your inflator instead of having to lift it up and try and get the air out to the highest point. It, it, as long as you're kind of like shoulders upright, it naturally vents out there anyway. Um, so yeah, to start a dive, it's actually pretty quick and convenient. You just kind of yank it down. Um, touch wood, I've never had an issue with one. Um, I don't think any of my BCDs have them. Um, <laughs> well, then but, that's why you've uh, not had an issue. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Uh, I mean, they, I've I've had BCDs with them, and yeah, I used to use them all the time because at the beginning of the dive, everyone's sort of on the surface, everyone okay to go down. Then yes, and um, and yeah, instead of like lifting it up, you just like yank it down, and it's it's pretty quick to uh, to vent some gas. Mm. Um, are they safe? yeah as as safe as they uh, they can be um it's it, it is an extra failure point but touch wood i don't think i've ever seen one fail um during a dive but um 
yeah if if i had one on my bcd i wouldn't take it off and replace it with mm. just a, a basic elbow um it's perfectly fine uh so yeah cool excellent yeah 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 ball dump's good yeah yeah mark mark assured mark assured <coughs> oh, there we go right so question got my my seal of approval. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, 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 oh. That, that's an inside joke that no one watching is going to know because yeah. we haven't mentioned that before on yeah. the channel. <laughs> Never mind. Guess what you <laughs> think it now. is in the comments below, guys. Let us know. Right? Okay, question four is from Hans or Hans. Hans. Uh, he says, I'm about to buy a new semi dry suit, probably the Siak Master Dry or maybe the Aqualung, Aqualung Icelandic Comfort. Yes, that sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, yeah. Both are seven mil. Which would be mm -hmm. your first choice, Mark? The Tarek, I'm uh, guessing. Lovely. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, the Aqualung, Aqualung, I, I do like. Um, they they are a very strong brand. They were actually the first brand because um, they have their roots with, uh, with Jacques Cousteau, and um, so yeah, the the Icelandics are smart suits. Um, you also have the new Apex uh, Thermic. Uh, that's very nice, very eco-friendly as well. Um, but yeah, Siak Master Dry um, used to uh, sort of sell lots of those. They are very popular, um, semi-dry. So yeah, just sort of have a look. If you can have a feel of them, because you can kind of feel the, the quality of different uh, sort of neoprenes, uh, but Aqualung always make good stuff. Not saying that Siak makes bad stuff, it's just, yeah, Aqualung are usually a bit more of a premium brand. Yeah, next stage. Um, is there anything else that you would consider? Uh, yeah, similar. the new Apex One. Yeah, the Apex One is uh, is smart. I I've tried them and they are warm, but very flexible as well, um, and eco friendly. And it comes with a changing mat and all this kind of stuff. It's it's one of those things where it's just a gift that keeps on giving. Um, Sweet. Any others? Uh, I like putting I you on the spot. It's good. I know. I tend to just move on to dry suits when it gets to uh, to semi dries. So yeah, it will be the um, just. Buy a dry suit. There we go. So you just, want to just semi aqualung, aqualung, <laughs> get the aqualung, and you'll be happy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sweet. So question number five is from Joseph. Joseph Dracula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he must have like written. I found out actually talking about vampires. Uh -huh. The reason mm -hmm. why um, they don't have they can't see themselves in mirrors is because mm. when they used to make mirrors back in the day, they, they there's like it's silver, silver. In, inside it. Yeah. So because of that, mm. and obviously they're silver. So if it was a modern mirror, vampires would be able to see themselves. There you go, guys. That is Sean's that's fact how, of the week. <laughs> that's how vampires shave. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go, they guys. see themselves in a mirror. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I love all that kind of the, the law that sort of goes behind things and you're like, oh yeah, back in the day it used to be such and such. Uh, you're yeah. like, oh, okay. And I also quite like the like the modern equivalency where, um, oh, what was it in Blade where uh, they're saying how vampire blood, it, it can't sustain haemoglobin or something. So that's why they have to consume blood. And you're like, oh, it's interesting. It, it's all make-believe, obviously. Hopefully. Hopefully. But, um, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph <laughs> says, uh, I'm looking to make my first personal purchase of a regulator. I've made the choice cool. of the Scuba Pro Mark 25 Evo A700 dive regulator. Cool. I'm mm -hmm. aware this is a bit pricey, but this model seems to be just plain good. Since COVID, it seems that people are more aware of it. Um, let's say I no longer want to rent, but have my own gear. What do you think, or can you advise me? Yeah, that that was always the the the, the in joke of like renting gear, especially regulator. You you know who spat in it. Um, but Ugh. post COVID, that that has a very sinister and kind of dark undertones to it. And like, yeah, you don't really want to be. I mean. There were new guidelines, so all dive centers have to clean them properly. There With are fire. Specific, yeah, yeah, single-use regulators. You, you just use it and you burn it. Um, no, we have special solutions and stuff that kills all the nasties, but still, yeah, it is nice to get your own stuff. Um, Mark 25 A700, wonderful regulator. They call it the, what is it, the, the diamond of their range or something um, because they love how, like, shiny it is and, uh, and how, like, unique because each... 
each one, each second stage is ever so slightly different. Um, whereas like plastic body second stages, they tend to come off a production lot and they're pretty the same. But because it's marine gray brass and chrome plated and all that kind of stuff, every single one is ever so slightly different. Um, so they have to be assembled very specifically. And if it doesn't go together, then you have to get a special part and all that. Lovely regulator, uh, very smooth breathe, very tough as well. And Scuba Pro, you can get it serviced in most places around the world. Um, Mark 25, very high performance first stage. They actually use it on some submarines to equalize the, uh, the pressure or regulate the pressure. Um, and yeah, five port swivel turret, so you have full range of um, sort of hose routing. And they got that sort of X-TIS uh, coating, which is pretty cool. So it worked in cold water as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, they they obviously they got the black version and the the carbon black as well. Uh, if you want to save a little bit of weight or go um, sort of with this black PVD coating, um, but otherwise, yeah, I, it's it's a nice nice regulator. I'd be happy with it. Cool, excellent. So yeah, bye bye bye. Nice, do it. Mm -hmm. It's worth. Yeah, by the sound of things, it's worth it's worth the dollar dollar if you can afford it and you know it's, you can afford to pay your bills nice. and eat. Then. Yeah, yeah. I think they first brought it out, what, seven years ago, maybe a bit more. Um, and yeah, it, 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 they haven't needed to change it. So a lot of regulators you'll get sort of five or six years and then they'll kind of change it. They'll make it a little bit different. Uh, but the A700, it just, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice size, cold water, warm water, you name it. And it's, it's different. With a lot of pictures you see of divers in the water, if you kind of like masked out the logo, you'd probably struggle to define which uh, sort of second stage it was. Whereas the A700 is very definitive shape and style. So mm. yeah, it's, it's a cool second stage. Sweet. So question number six is from Chris. He says, is there a way to estimate the lift capacity needed for a wing? Uh, yeah, um, it's not fun. Uh, you, you literally have to itemize everything that you're diving with, work out its buoyancy, whether it's positively buoyant or negatively buoyant, uh, kind of put all of that into a spreadsheet and then it will spit out a, a number. What you could do is go to uh, your local sort of diving wherever it is and put on all the kits and with an empty cylinder, kind of see how positive or negatively buoyant you are. And um, and then, yeah, you basically sort of work it out against that. It's, um, for, for most diving, you, you don't need the, the most uh, like 60 pound wings and all that kind of stuff. It's only if, yeah, you, you, you have all that you are, ridiculously negatively buoyant you've got all of this gear as well um and yeah i think a lot of divers they think that they need a lot of buoyancy but all they actually have to do is take some lead off of their weight belt um because that's obviously dragging you down whereas the the buoyancy at depth you shouldn't really be using it if you can avoid it mm. um but yeah it is literally just working out the buoyancy of each part of your kit and then sort of working out oh do i need 40 pounds or do i need more than 40 pounds um yeah it's, it's it's not fun but you can look up a lot of people have done the work for you especially with cylinders um you can look up the uh, the buoyancy of certain cylinders when they're full when they're empty how they how buoyant or negatively buoyant they are in the water and then you just sort of put that all in a table and just sort of work out when you are at different stages of the dive, either right at the beginning or right at the end, uh, just sort of work out how positive or negatively buoyant you are. You say it's boring. Oh, no, sorry, not boring, not fun. I know the majority of scuba divers who are either watching this or listening to this are probably super excited about... <laughs> Getting everything out, weighing it, doing all the individual. I'm, not, oh. I'm, I'm never going to do a deep dive on it just because it's it's so just painfully tedious. <laughs> and so, just, guys, right, there's going to be a vote. <laughs> Should Mark do a deep dive? Yes or yes? Head over to the. No, I would never do that. That's mean. Lord, no, because it is literally breaking down each individual part and then your actual body itself uh, and just, yeah, working out how buoyant it is 
and then yeah, add it all up. Well, if you want me to torches, your dive computer, yeah, everything that you're wearing. If you need help uh, me breaking down your body, like I said, I've got a machete, and I'm not afraid to use <laughs> it. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, YouTube slash Google, I'm only joking. I'm not a serial killer. Slash the police. Slash the police. <laughs> FBI. FBI, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so normally, normally that would be it. Six questions, that's normally our limit. But we have a bonus question this week, um, and it's a corker. So it's something that's generally quite cool, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, it doesn't necessarily fit into the main section because it's not an advice, it's just a, a consideration type. Anyway, it's from D.H. Okay. Damon Hill, the famous uh, F1 driver, I'm guessing, yeah. maybe. Uh, you never anyway, know. You never know, you never know. Anyway, they say, he says, them say, she says, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. If cost wasn't a consideration, would you go with okay. either X Deep or Hollis or Dive Right or dot 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 so mark if money wasn't a consideration which brands would you buy for scuba diving and also i'm going to add on which companies would you buy like would you want to own if money was okay. a consideration so i'm splitting up the question have at it have fun <laughs> Uh, okay, so answering the the, the actual question, um, so X Deep, X Deep, Hollis, and uh, and Dive Right, they're very sort of backplate and wing sort of uh, sort of companies. So I figure that's what they're kind of aiming at. If money were no object, then X Deep hands down, um, because both Hollis, uh, Dive Right, quite a few of the other uh, brands, they're very traditional in a sense where the backplate is kind of the same shape that it's been for. 30 40 years um the harness isn't that unique it's pretty similar um the the like deluxe harnesses the the ones with the adjustment and the padding on all that kind of stuff that's a little bit different between hollis and dive right and stuff but the, yeah when you get to the, the, the like the bare bones and stuff especially the um the bladders as well they're fairly similar but with x deep they're they're very different uh so x deep the, the back plate alone, especially on their X deep, no, sorry, their NX range. Um, it's it's shaped like an X, uh, it's, it's very unique, so it's much more ergonomic. Instead of that traditional back plate shape, it's it's kind of spread out and the, uh, the pressure points going on your shoulders and your hips, uh, a bit more comfortable. The way that the harnesses are, uh, are sort of aligned, instead of just being a traditional harness, because that's how everybody does it, they, they change it. So now your shoulder straps, they're actually much longer, so easy to get in and out of, but then the waistband goes over the top of it. So when you do your waistband up, it actually tightens those shoulder straps in, which is very clever. The wings, the material that they're using, that and even how they like finish the edges, they're using lasers and clever modern stuff. Um, everything that X Deep kind of makes is just that little bit different, that little bit better, and they have that kind of flair of, yeah, this this is kind of cool. So yeah, I'd I'd be happy going down the uh, the uh, the X Deep range um, to own a company. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, someone like Shearwater, um, because everything, Iron well, Shearwater. everything that, <laughs> everything that Shearwater make uh, is just gold. Everything works. The divers love it, and uh, and it just simply works. Well constructed, and it's it's that kind of Canadian thing of it's it's just nice, and it, it's, it's <laughs> all those like little extras, like they all they come in that nice little uh, little EVA box, and it's got all the extra bits and bobs inside of it. So that's always nice. Um, Apex, similar, everything that they're making recently um, is just beautiful uh, and sort of well constructed. Um, yeah, they they'd be my sort of top three at the moment. Um, that's sad, mate. You missed the most important brand out there, the Simply Scuba Iron brand. You need. We you do have a few bits and bobs. You need. If you want some dry bags, some watches. Yeah, you need them. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's very interesting, <laughs> guys and girls. I'll uh, put the question to you. Money was no object. What brand would you go for for your scuba gear? And also, what company, scuba diving company, would you purchase and why? Let us know 
in the comments below, please. And that is That'd it. Be quite interesting. Ask Mark. We we should come up with some kind of like tournament. So I'm thinking of like a tournament setup where we sort of pit two brands against one another and then each week we kind of whittle it down in like this huge tournament and then eventually we come to the winning brand. Okay. That would be quite interesting. All right, we're going to do that, but that's your baby, Mark, because you suggested it. <laughs> and just to help with your editing, you can edit that as well. There we go. Well oh, done. no, it's just, going to, it's just going to be a vote. <laughs> no, I reckon we should... All right, that's going to be your baby. But we should right. do that. That sounds good. Okay. Pit the brands. But number one, it's not a fix. I already know that number one is going to be the Simply Scuba own brand. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, how it happened, guys. It just did. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's end this video, Mark. Okay. Do you want me to end it? No. Do you know what? Because you don't like the outros, no, do you? End it. you, you want to do the outro? Um, okay. If you have a question for Mark, just use the hashtag AskMark in your question. You can comment it on any of our YouTube videos. Don't obviously put it on someone else's because they're not going to know what that is. So any of our no, videos. Do it. Um, do it. Well, yeah. <laughs> do. They won't understand. Yeah. If you want to confuse some people, whack it on another. Whack it on Divers Ready. Just go over there, type in a question, hashtag AskMark. Do it. Let's, let's a good freak laugh. him out of it. He, yeah, he'd, he'd have a laugh with it. Don't yeah, he worry would. about it. He would. Bless him. Sorry, James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so if you've got any questions, just, yeah, add the hashtag AskMark. We will find it. And again, you can do the same on Instagram and Facebook, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't check them. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I you check. do. Yeah, I, do. Yeah. I mean, I check. I do my job internet fusion. <laughs> I'm, I don't disregard. Sean, the Sean is very Facebook. busy. I am very busy. Sean is very busy, and I, I cover the, the little other bits and bits. little bit. That's because we're a team, Mark. Mm hmm. Super scuba. Teamwork forever. is how the dream works. Yeah, mate. Um, anyway, yeah, so yeah, questions. Go ask Mark. Pop in comments. Uh, we have a store, Tea Springs. Buy stuff from it. Cheers. Uh, what else do you normally say? Uh, Klarna. Oh, no, that's on the podcast. But yeah, we've got Klarna. So we, we, you... we, have an actual, we have an actual website that sells actual scuba diving uh, equipment. Uh, simply did... scuba. Oh, is that what it was? I was going to say one of our competitors, but I thought best not. Don't really want to give them <laughs> our platform. But yeah, simplyscuba.com for all your scuba diving needs. Uh, if you can't afford it, we have Klarna. So use that. Uh, you know, if you want to buy a, a really expensive regulator, uh, Klarna enables you to purchase or spread the payment over three months. Um, I don't think there's any interest or anything. It's just a nicer way of doing it. A, a more manageable yeah, no, way of you purchasing yeah. items. Uh, that's it. Cheers. Bye. See you later. That was perfect, Mark. That was... <laughs> It was an outro. All right. Well, you show me how it's done then. <laughs> you, you, you put another up. You, you add the outro. This is outro point two. Two, two point okay, zero. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, comments, queries, or even corrections to anything that myself or Sean has said, uh, let us know <laughs> down in the I'm comments perfect. below. I don't mess it up. Try and use the, the hashtag AskMark. Just makes it a lot easier for us to find it. Uh, we also have our website, simplyscuba.com, where you can find the latest and greatest scuba diving equipment. Uh, we also have our merchandise store, all sorts of interesting, funky designs for T-shirts, hoodies, water bottles. We even do socks. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's going to be a banner underneath this ad. So you you can uh, so you can check that out. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving. You're such a pro. Do you know what, though, guys? I'm going to leave both intro outros in there, <laughs> and then you can vote below which one do you prefer. Mine, the professional one, or Mark, who mm. just instantly went into outro mode and said it clean cut professional. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to go. Do you want to say safe dive? Bye, guys. Uh, stay classy, scuba divers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>